Good morning. Let's go ahead and pray. Oh God, Father, I am thankful for this time that we get to meditate on your gospel, to just remind ourselves of these truths, to be impacted by these truths. I pray that this would just bear fruit in our lives. Jesus, it is always in your great name we pray. Amen. Please open your Bibles to John chapter 6, verse 40. John chapter 6, verse 40. Often, we believe that our senses provide the best evidence for coming to a conclusion. What are some common things that we like to say? Seeing is believing, or one that I often use, I'll believe it when I see it. This, this is how we just operate. We, we need evidence and proof to make decisions all day long. And that's fine. However, for fallen, sinful humanity, no amount of evidence or proof will be sufficient to rightly respond to Jesus. Please follow along as I read in John chapter 6, verse 40. Jesus says, For this is the will of my Father, that everyone who beholds the Son and believes in him will have eternal life, and I myself will raise him up on the last day. Our verse has Jesus responding to a large crowd of people. This specific crowd of people has been following Jesus for a couple days at least. Initially, they were following him because of the signs that he was performing on the sick. However, more recently, within the last day, they were following him because he made food out of nothing and fed 5,000 men, which, when you include the women and children, was on the order of 20,000 people. This crowd didn't simply witness or see Jesus perform a miracle. They actively participated in it. They ate the bread that Jesus miraculously created. However, as Jesus is responding to the crowd today in our passage, he knows their motivation for continuing to seek him and continuing to follow him. Simply put, they want more food. In verse 29, Jesus tells them to believe in him. Believe in me. And the crowd responds to that by saying in verse 30, what then do you do for a sign that we may see and believe you? Really? This crowd has been seeing Jesus heal people. This crowd saw Jesus make bread out of nothing. This crowd actually ate the bread. And now this crowd wants more before they actually believe. Jesus rebukes the crowd in verse 36 and says, But I said to you that you have seen me and yet do not believe. Seeing is not believing. And these people did not believe it when they saw it. Our verse, verse 40, says, For this is the will of my Father, that everyone who beholds the Son and believes in him will have eternal life. And I myself will raise him up on the last day. Jesus says that his father's desire is that everyone, everyone who responds to Jesus in two specific ways will have eternal life. The first response is to behold the son. One must behold the son of God. That word for behold means to observe something with sustained attention. It was used to describe someone who was spectating at an event. Hopefully, you got to watch the military flyover yesterday. Or rather, on, on Friday. Those airplanes, watching them, hearing them, had my sustained attention, had my family's sustained attention, had all my neighbors' sustained attention. Hearing, hearing that and seeing that, uh, that's all we were paying attention to as they flew over. That's God's desired response 
for those that are exposed to Jesus. That they would give their attention and their focus to him. The second response is to believe in him. The word for believe here is to entrust oneself to someone with complete confidence. With the implication of total commitment to the one that's being trusted. This is completely and totally turning away from self and entrusting oneself to Jesus. This is being convinced that all his revelations and disclosures are true. This is believing that he is, this is believing who he is, and everything that he says. Jesus is the Son of Man, and he is the Son of God. He's the coming King, and he's the Savior. Humanity's problem is that we're all sinners, and God is holy. God is set apart. He's perfect, he's sinless, and because of who God is, sin must be and will be punished. But God is also merciful and gracious. God the Father sent his son to earth to live a perfect sinless life. He came to go to the cross to bear the Father's wrath for sin and to be a substitute for sinners. For all those that trust and believe in him, that believe in Jesus, Jesus received the punishment for their sins on the cross. Our verse says that all those that respond to Jesus by beholding him and believing in him will have eternal life. They will be with God. They will see him face to face. They will see him face to face forever. However, perhaps you're listening to this and you you do not believe in Jesus. You haven't responded to Jesus with total commitment. You're not sure if everything he's said and done are in fact true. What would it take to convince you? What would be enough evidence or proof? If Jesus were standing in front of you, healing the sick, performing miracles, making food out of nothing, would that convince you? No, not even that would convince you. Jesus did all of these things in front of the crowds and it did not convince them and it wouldn't convince you either. Simply put, belief or faith, the faith in the belief is a gift from God. He is the one that provides it and people simply respond to it. He provides a belief and people respond in faith. God saves his people and his people respond by believing. I have a warning for you who do not believe. If you stay in your unbelief, you will have an eternity in front of you. But it will be an eternity separated from God. And on that last day, you will experience suffering in the lake of fire forever. You must believe. I beg you, believe and trust yourself to Jesus. If you have any questions, contact the person that you know here at GBC. Contact any one of the, the pastors you can send us an email, uh, elders at gbcaz.org. We would love to have a conversation with you about who Jesus is and what, how we can help you to have faith in him, help you to believe. Believer, there's one part of this verse that I have not yet covered. 
the end of verse 40, Jesus says, and I myself will raise him up on the last day. The idea here is that Jesus will personally ensure that his people will be kept and guarded to the very end. This is the doctrine of the perseverance and preservation of the saints. One commentator says it this way. In these and many other passages of scripture, scripture teaches a counsel that cannot be changed, a calling that cannot be revoked, an inheritance that cannot be defiled, a foundation that cannot be shaken, a seal that cannot be broken, and a life that cannot perish. Jesus makes this promise, and he will personally see it through. 